Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst video games of 2020. John Cena, I must warn the others. For this list, we're looking at games that made 2020 a worse year than it already was. Seriously, things were already crappy before these titles came out. What's the worst game you played this year? Tell us about your troubles in the comments below. Now on to the top 10 of bad. Number 10, Bleeding Edge. These guys are augmented freaks. In some cases, it can be assuring to hear a developer getting acquired by a publisher. Exciting, even. But in the case of Ninja Theory and Xbox Game Studios, things are looking rather bland. And it's all because of Bleeding Edge. Check in the stack up. It was already a bad idea putting yet another hero shooter out in an already congested market. To charge $60 for it when it's lean on content and absent of ranked matches? Terrible idea. And many players felt the same way. Really, this is what you have the studio behind Heavenly Sword and Hellblade make? Number 9. WWE 2K Battlegrounds Honestly, we're not even surprised anymore. It's basically become a tradition for the WWE to find its way onto our worst of the year lists. Whereas WWE 2K20 became the laughing stock of the internet with its horrendous bugs and glitches, there is nothing funny about Battlegrounds. The whole package is void of any personality now that wrestlers can share the same moves and everyone looks like a slightly melted Bratz doll. John And as expected from a 2K sports game, you'll have to grind your mind away or buy microtransactions in order to unlock all of the wrestlers. But with gameplay as boring and lifeless as this, you'll likely delete the game and never touch it again. We'll be damned if WWE somehow gets worse next year. Well, in this world, I think it's over, and yes, it is! Ah, the sweet taste of victory! Number 8. Cooking Mama, Cook Star. For someone as sweet and charming as Cooking Mama, one wouldn't expect her to be shrouded in controversy. Cooking Mama Cookstar was about as shady as moldy chicken covered in fresh teriyaki sauce once it was found to be an unlicensed product and allegedly served as a means for mining cryptocurrency. That's cool. Business controversies aside, Cookstar was just terrible all around. Gameplay was tedious and uninspiring, and Mama sounded like a condescending robot that had inconspicuously replaced the real Mama. The only way this game could be redeemed is if Mama was being yelled at by Gordon Ramsay as we jumbled our spoons about. Hooray, Mama's impressed. Number seven, Mafia 2 Definitive Edition. <laughs> We had this version of Mafia 2 on our worst games of 2020 so far list. Why? Because it is terrible, and still is. Not only has the gameplay not aged particularly well with its chore list of objectives, but the performance is absolutely abysmal with more frames dropping than an art museum going through an earthquake. Given that this is a supposed remaster of a game released in 2010, we expected better for Mafia 2. Why were the same mistakes from Mafia 3 repeated? At least the first game got better treatment in these definitive editions. I told you the next time we opened the books, we'd recommend you, didn't I? And now it's done. You had something to do with this, but you work for Frank Vinci. Number six, The Elder Scrolls Blades. The 
Bethesda has burned away a lot of goodwill since turning their IPs into live services. As if Elder Scrolls Online wasn't enough, we got a second monetized experience in the form of Elder Scrolls Blades. And man, does it reek of pay to play. Overall, it's dreadfully boring, but it tries so hard to get you to spend money with lengthy timers. Even if one was to pay every time they were asked, one would find a hyperlinear game that shows nothing of what makes Elder Scrolls so great. Besides, why play this when we can play Skyrim on a dozen other platforms? Number 5. Remothered. Broken Porcelain. You know they need to call him. Why men once upon a time? <laughs> You're hurting me! What else do you expect from a game with a title this awful? What the hell is Remothered supposed to mean? Remothered Broken Porcelain tries to skate by with a decent story, but everything else falters because of the terrible optimization, combat, and some archaic trial and error designs. Honestly, this probably would have served better as a TV show, but we already have had a show about maids with strained relationships living in a bleak environment. The only difference between the two is that one doesn't kill off characters mid cutscene and run like a PlayStation FMV sequence. My god, I have to leave this place at once. Number 4. Fast and Furious Crossroads. <sighs> I need to come up with a lot of money in three days. What? How do you take something as explosive and thrilling like the Fast and Furious movies and make them so unbelievably boring? Most of your time in Crossroads is spent following insanely scripted events within incredibly repetitive missions. That's it, come on! Really, how more monotonous can you get than drive from point A to point B before you run from the cops with your tail in between your legs? The optimization, on the other hand, is laughably bad, as characters will stutter mid-dialogue and cars will fly across your screen or crash into each other on more than a few occasions. Honestly, Vin Diesel's head is way more polished than this. Hey, Letty, stay safe out there. You know me. Number three, Dawn of Fear. You know, there's a reason why the games industry as a whole has abandoned fixed camera angles. Overall, it takes controlling characters and performing simple actions like shooting more of a hassle than they need to be. However, this is the least of Resident Evil, I, I mean, Dawn of Fear's problems. Having terrible camera angles and broken weapons is one thing, but constantly bugging out in graphical glitches and performance issues is another. See, Dawn usually implies the beginning of something, and since the game strikes every feeling but fear, it'd be more appropriate to call the game Dawn of Bugs, Dawn of Crashes, or Dawn of a Mid-Afternoon Nap. Number 2. Warcraft 3 Reforged Whereas Bethesda has burned goodwill through a live service brainwashing of its IPs, Blizzard has gained significant notoriety over how it's treated fans as of late. You'd think they'd have learned to be more respectful after many other controversies, but then we got Warcraft 3 Reforged. What is important is that you rally your people and leave these shores immediately. Leave? What's this all about, human? Touting supposed graphical upgrades and more cinematics, fans found none of the upgrades at launch. Instead, they coughed up their money for texture upgrades and incredibly hostile user policies. This infuriated so many players that Reforge ended up receiving the lowest user-rated score on Metacritic. Then we must prepare this camp immediately. I want my warriors to have food and proper lodgings when they arrive. Yes, War Chief. Before we get to 2020's absolute worst game, here are a few other dishonorable mentions. Those Who Remain, 
A good setting only gets you so far. Waking, and we're sleeping. Rugby 20. Not surprising to see another rugby game on a worst of list. Think collective while being creative. No matter the cost, we will conquer the field. Today, victory is ours. Warlander doesn't even try to do anything notable. <laughs> Treachery in Beatdown City. Its concept is the definition of sounded good at the time. Or anime heroes doing they friends in trouble. It ain't gotta be noble. I fight for stupid reasons. I find a reason to fight against any human breathing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Crucible. What could be so bad about Crucible that it beat out aggressive policies, unstable optimizations, and glitches galore? Well, folks, the aforementioned titles at least have some significance behind them when it comes to how bad they were. Crucible, on the other hand, doesn't even try to distinguish itself from the rest of the gaming landscape. Get back! Coming through! The game looked generic, it played generic, and it sounded generic. In other words, there was nothing special about it outside of it being a video game. Feedback was so poor that Amazon actually delisted the game a few days after release, putting it back into closed beta. Servers were officially shut down in November 2020, merely six months after launch. Thank God. Congratulations, Jess Earl. This concludes the Unity Safety Training Demonstration. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.